the last time you talked to Pat? Like, I uh, sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day that I'm going to personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, and I know the, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational secret or uh, speaker and be positive. I am, but there, I, I'm also I don't put up with little bitches, and I'm a fighter at the end of the day. And if the guy's the gonna run his mouth, and, that, like, I sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day and yell at me that I'm that I'm an asshole and that I'm horrible to work with. All I say is ask any promoter I've ever worked for what the story was, and you're not the the, the proof is in the pudding. Do it. These people robbed his buddy KM and fucking. Pat and all these other cruel guys were doing homosexual wrestling activities with an old man and robbed him of nearly a million dollars, which they joked about it. Oh, it was never anything. I've heard what was going on with those guys and what they were doing, and the guy eventually passed away, Bob, the wizard as they called him, and it was talked about on this show, who I always would, I never understood any of that. I go, I always told him it was fucked up when we would talk off the air, that they would go and perform weird wrestling moves on this old man and, and took him of all his money over a matter of years. I, I'm just gonna present you guys with facts. What kind of human being, if you're gonna do that kind of shit, that you're, you're, you're fucked up. And I have nothing against people that, how their sexual preference or anything like that, but they robbed this man of all his money. The last time you talked to Pat, like I uh, sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day that I'm gonna personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, and I know the, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational seeker or uh, speaker and be positive. I am, but there, I, I'm also I don't put up with little bitches and I'm a fighter at the end of the day. And if a guy's gonna run his mouth and Pat was running his mouth to other promoters, is speaking ill of me that I'm that I'm an asshole and that I'm horrible to work with. All I say is ask any promoter I've ever worked for what the story was, and you're not the the, the proof is in the pudding. Do it. These people robbed his buddy KM and fucking Pat and all these other cruel guys were doing homosexual wrestling activities with an old man and robbed that him of nearly hilarious. a million dollars, which they joked about it. Oh, it was never anything. I've heard what was going on with those guys. And what they were doing, and the guy eventually passed away. Bob, the wizard, as they call him, and it was talked about on the show. Oh my God, dude, Seth Rollins! <laughs> oh my God, dude, five weeks in a row. I mean, not in a row, but five weeks at least, where Seth Rollins has looked like an asshole running into something. Oh my God, dude, I can't get enough of of evil villain, stupid, funny Seth Rollins. That is gold, bro. He dove into nobody and bounced off the ropes. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. That's hilarious, dude. Oh. Oh, my God. All right, Dominic. Man. Oh, God. I can't get enough of Rollins, bro. Dude, the Rollins package was my favorite part of the night, I think. The Rollins package of him, like, <laughs> putting fucking Rey Mysterio's eye into the, t into the stairs. Like, that was the funniest part of this whole night for me. Like, and that was, like, a replay of stuff that's happened. I think if you asked me, like, what would I remember from WWE in the year 2020... I think the first thing I would say is, I think I would say Seth Rollins' heel character. I think it's the best thing in WWE right now. It's the most entertaining thing. And I like that Samoa Joe got involved because he made everything way more realistic. Like Byron Saxon right now is super not believable. Dude. Let's try to regroup. Like, I mean, he's so not believable as a commentator. Byron Saxon, please fire him. WWE, if you watch my reviews, please fire. I mean, don't, okay, wait a minute. Don't fire Byron Saxon, actually, because I like him. But put him as a backstage announcer. 
He should be working as a backstage announcer. Okay? WWE, please. Get him off commentary booth, though. The Tom Phillips thing, great shots of that. That was the best thing of the night right there, that whole last segment. And now we got to watch Dolph Ziggler in a pretend fight. In a pretend more realistic-looking fight than normal. And now we got to watch a guy tap out to a D Dolph Ziggler with curly hair. This whole f this whole fight thing is literally just to fill time for the WWE. This is just to fill time for when they got stuff going on. I don't know. Hmm. We need a new donation song tonight with the Seth Rollins gif. It's got to happen. Sucker got knocked out. This sucker got knocked out. What is this? this is like literally just to fill time I feel like just like be, so they don't have to worry about timing everything perfectly anymore they can just like all right we gotta edit this much footage of the fight that happened fight number four edit this much footage of fight number five damn they got some titties and asses I mean that's the best thing about that too the best thing about the underground so far has been those almost naked women seriously I'm dead serious I don't even care that much about women at all you know I got a wife. Oh, it just doesn't do it. I don't care. I'm not like a fuck. I'm not like a. Oh, what a leg sweep takedown by MVP. So we're gonna watch MVP beat up a five foot eight guy from the crowd here. Is that supposed to be good or something? Is like, is like Rotundo or Bombado or whatever that other big guy is from earlier gonna come in here? Babonte or whatever the hell his name was. Is he gonna come in here and beat somebody up? What's gonna happen? Oh wait, isn't this the old Raw announcer, this guy? Is this the old Raw announcer? Or is this a different guy with dreads? I can't tell. Is this the old Raw announcer? I can't even tell, man. Oh my god, Spine Buster. It's only two minutes left and I've already seen a Spine Buster. Good lord. Good lord, look out. Look out. What is this? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Raw Review. It's Brawl for All if it Brawl for All was lame as hell, man. Come on. Oh, my God, dude. It's still going on. Here, you have some COVID. You have some COVID. I hope I've got it to give it to you. Good Lord. They should have ended with the other thing. They should have, I mean, they, they've done the Rollins Dominic thing a million times, so maybe they thought, like, this is different. Is this it? Is this the end of the show? This is what happens at Raw Underground. Anything goes, you can just beat up the crowd. Gut wrench power bomb by Lashley on this on this dorky white dude with a t-shirt. Good lord. He got knocked to hell. Good god almighty. With that leg sweep. Spine buster. Never see that ever, huh? is this dude what is going on what am I watching right now dude oh my god dude 
Oh my god, dude. Good lord, dude. We are the hurt business. Business is booming. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. Stone Roses in the chat says WWE made 43 million this quarter. Business is definitely booming. I mean, what the hell, bro? What the hell was that? I'm going to start with the things I liked about Raw. And then I'm going to have a fucking conniption. I'm going to start with the things I liked about Raw. And there weren't many. Yo, shut that music off. I'm going to stab it. Uh, listen, here's the deal. The um, I enjoyed tonight on Raw. What did I enjoy about Raw tonight? I enjoyed tonight on Raw when I went off the air. Uh, no, I enjoyed tonight. Uh, I kind of thought the Bianca Belair segment in the back was all right. I thought the Seth Rollins stuff was good again. I thought that was good. Pretty good stuff. I enjoyed that. You know, not a big deal, but I thought that was all right. I thought the promos with Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre were pretty good. So those those were pretty good. I like the idea of this. I guess the power was flickering all night. We didn't know what was going on. And apparently I missed the part that explained the whole thing. Can somebody explain it to me? Because I'm actually lost. Somebody threw a Molotov cocktail at a generator or something like that. Can somebody clarify that for me? Because I missed that part. But I saw the power was flickering on and off all night, and I was wondering about it. So they 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 repeated several things that we've seen in the WWE before tonight. They they did the bad version of Brawl for All, like really bad version, really bad version. Like it wasn't real, so it was just not even the Brawl for All. People were calling it Brawl for All tonight. It's not because it wasn't even. That at all. There was no new faction. If anybody I don't I don't know I don't know why people were even saying there was gonna be a new faction. Was that because Shane McMahon said that tonight he would uh be introducing something big? Well the big thing was the underground thing. It wasn't a wrestler, it wasn't a faction, it was the underground. They gave that away at ten o'clock. What I don't understand is this. I don't understand why the hell we have to watch Shaky Cam fights. It feels like WWE was just hoping that people would be changing the channel and think that this was MMA. Like, what the hell kind of MMA is this? What is this? Is this a movie? What movie is this? Oh, it's WWE. And maybe people would be flipping the channels or something like that, and they would come across this. They'd be like, oh, my God, what's this? Well, I've got to well, I've got to watch some more of this. Nothing about the WWE Underground was different. It only all it did was gave them a reason to pan away and for them to be sloppier with their timing when it comes to the overall show. So if they screw up things at some point with timing, they can say, "Well, we have Throw fight number three in there for another minute while well, we're missing 40 seconds. Well, cut fight number seven down a little bit and throw that in there. So it gives them something to cut to. It gives them something to cut to. 
What did we learn tonight? That the Hurt Business or something was going to go over there and then say that they're the best in the middle of... What the? What kind of crappy, stupid crap is this? First of all, what the hell is this thing? What's the point of it? Is anyone making money? It looks like people are just getting their ass kicked for pride. Why does the Hurt Business want to go over there? There was no reason for any of it. It was just fighting for no reason. Other than to give you something different to look at. WWE, if you want to give me something different to look at, don't give me more cuts and more shaky cam in an environment that I don't give a crap about. By the way, Impact Wrestling did it better recently with EC3 showing up. You ripped it off. But the other thing is, instead of doing this, do a Star Trek The Next Generation 10 forward. Several times on the show in Star Trek, we see the crew members talking in 10 forward, which is the bar or the restaurant. Now, granted, I don't want to see a backstage segment in catering every week, but... You could build a little mini set of a bar or shoot on a location with a bar where the wrestlers are interacting. Maybe the wrestlers can talk about their real lives or talk about a real story that's going on, and they could integrate that into some kind of story. Maybe once in a while they fight. Maybe once in a while they just have a beer and talk, and they cut to those scenes of them talking or chatting or talking about what's been going on or making jokes. Maybe the directors at WWE let the wrestlers fly off the cuff and just ad-lib like a like Ghostbusters by Paul Feig, the moron that made 2016 Ghostbusters. And the wrestlers can just ad-lib about things. And we can cut to them telling stories or talking about their personal life or demons or, or about the wrestling industry right now or about what they're doing and blah, blah, blah. Maybe once in a while you orchestrate a bar fight. Maybe once in a while you, you have a, re, a new reoccurring character who plays the bartender. And you can cut to that. For 5 to 20 minutes every week. Let's go check in at the bar. You know, bar stories or bar, bar the underground is, is a location nearby the center where a lot of the WWE superstars go after the show. And they hang out and they have a good time. Well, we've gotten permission to film there 24-7 reality TV style and document everything that goes on there. When we find some things we think are interesting, we cut them together and we play them here for you. During Monday Night Raw, like blah, blah, blah. That might be better. That might be better than the underground thing. Because the underground thing is just more punching and kicking and shake the fucking camera everywhere for no reason. Wow, everything you did on the underground, you could have just done in the ring. Now, I granted Shane McMahon is charismatic. And I like him with the microphone, excited about the fights. He does get you excited at first. But then you realize it's all just bullshit. And then you're like, this is going nowhere, so this sucks. And you're like, I, I like Shane. You know, a lot of people went into tonight rolling their eyes like, yeah, Shane will save it. Great, Shane will really save it. Um, but, you know, he did a good job. That wasn't the problem. The problem was what they did with it. So stupid. Really stupid. I like my idea better of having a bar. And a place where wrestlers can break kayfabe or shoot on their personal lives, stories, things are going on, injuries they've had in the ring. Um, maybe then they can also create skits out of it where they write some stuff for them to say or do or whatever. But just try to make it wicked casual and real. And if you can get a couple wrestlers who do want to have a beer, shoot it for real. And play it during Raw as if it's... Here, you know, we're going to check out what's on, what's what's going on at WWE Underground on tap or whatever the fuck. You know, and maybe there'd be funny scenes that you could film. Maybe a couple of the guys are like, you know, it'd be funny if we went out there and we popped Sheamus's tires. And he goes out there and he, can you imagine the look on his face if he goes out there and he sees his tires and his car or paw are just punctured, you know? And now, I mean, that's SmackDown, but you know what I'm saying. And the guys are laughing or whatever. And then they film the guy coming out, and the the car tires are popped, and the guy's face is crazy. And then he's pissed off. He's chasing them around, and then they cut up, they cut back. 
Then when they cut back to the bar, they're doing something. Maybe the cops show up on one of the on one of the segments because they were too loud or they're playing music outside or something. And then this funny interaction happens with the cops. There's a million things you could write for. Let, let's do WWE Cheers, right? And you can cut from anywhere from five minutes to thirty minutes and play it on Raw. It'd be better than this fighting thing because it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, the bar stuff doesn't matter either. But it doesn't matter because it doesn't have to. Because at least it's interaction with wrestlers. You can build character. You can do stupid storylines that don't matter. You did it with the Viking Raiders. Right? They did this with the Viking Raiders. Except they did it too goofily. And they did it too cartoony. The Viking Raiders and the Street Profits did this. They enabled WWE Raw to be paced back in a way that was easier. They didn't have to because they were having such trouble timing the show. So sometimes they'd have to film a match just to kill time or something. Because they couldn't quite it's hard to film a three hour show and time it correctly and do all these things right. With COVID going on and people being sick left and right and having to stop and start tapings. So I, I get it. But that was at least that that's why I never completely crapped on those things, those segments, because at least they were doing something. And I get it. It was buying them time. It was buying them time outside the ring that we didn't have to see the ring every week. It was it was buying them uh, time where they could edit the show exactly how they wanted to. There's so many reasons why I understand what the, why they did that. But my God, man. And yeah, th this. I give them credit for trying to do something different or whatever, you know, you want to say. Um, but, oh, my God, dude. People are saying a faction was supposed to debut tonight. I don't even know about that. Was there really a faction that was supposed to debut tonight? I mean, I think it was, was it MVP's faction? I don't even get it. What the hell was this show tonight? WWE United States uh, title match, MVP versus Apollo Crews. We're going to get to everything, guys. Let me play a donation here. Shit, bomb. What's up, Chad? How you doing? Spaz Phoenix blocked me for an opinion, lol, fake bitch. Hope NXT dies and everyone midget gets buried. And the funny part was he misunderstood me and didn't bother to talk it out. So fuck him, lil wanna be edgy bitch. What is he, JD? Good God, man. I, I, I literally brought that up on Twitter earlier and the guy misunderstood me. And he flipped out. He was like, well, he didn't flip out, but he kind of like tweeted. Then I had to deal with all those trolls. It's crazy, dude. I literally didn't tag him because I wasn't saying anything bad about him. I was just saying, you know, you're, you're going to see all those fucking idiots. And it was just a stupid tweet. And there he was immediately to say, like, what do you mean? Uh, and then all these stupid people came out of the woodwork. It's like, oh, my God, dude, what is going on tonight? I hate today. I think today's garbage. If you guys are new to the channel, I hope you subscribe down below. We're talking about nine years or something like that, live after every Raw, every SmackDown. I don't think anybody's been doing it this long. So I want to say thank you guys for being here with me for the last nine years. Nobody else has been going live after every Raw and every SmackDown for this long. You guys are amazing for being here still after all this time, uh, for getting the numbers up, hitting that like button down below and being here with me. I'm in a bit of a coma today, man. They tore down my trees in my backyard today. Um, I was doing stuff with the kids, you know what I mean? Like, I was just doing tons of things. I am, like, dead. I need to go to bed, like, now. But there's so much going on, man. So much going on. The, 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 it's all going to come out, man. It's all going to come out. Today is all awful, Omar Fakarani. Uh, by the way, if you guys want to become a member down below, become a member. Check it out. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined me earlier today for Monetize This, the replay of the band episode two. 64, 254, I don't even remember the number, but anyway, whatever. We had fun. Glad it got re-uploaded today. Um, Bullfrog was banned for $2,000 for a couple of months ago. Uh, that was fun. And uh, much appreciated, bro. Hit that like button if you can. Thanks for the dono. Uh, who was that? Uh, it was Shy God. Shy God, thanks, man. Why would Sp That's weird that Spaz uh, blocked you, but you, I don't know. Maybe Spaz thought you were somebody else, man. Kane and I'm donating 
business is booming booming is in blowing up any semblance of good shit they might have had going for them. Yeah, I don't understand that. Dan and Dan and Cora, what's up, Dan and Cora? How are you? I don't understand that, man. What was that? Like, we got the underground, man. Oh, my God, this underground thing. It's crazy. Wow, we're underground. And then just MVP and his goons are going to show up and say that they're great, and that's it? That was the point of it? What was the point of that? What was the fucking point of that? You don't even know what you're doing, do you, WWE? Do you even know what you're doing anymore? Do you know Ric Flair's wife has COVID? Do you even know what you're doing, WWE? I don't think WWE knows what they're doing. I'm pretty sure they don't know. I'm pretty sure they don't know what they're doing. It feels like they don't. What in the world is WWE doing? By the way, Jake DeMarco is sick. Uh, he's having some trouble today, so uh, he could not be here. He is the luckiest man alive for not have watching this trash. Some of it was trash. Some of it was all right. There was a couple of things that were good. Um, you know, Apollo Crews gets the victory. He gets everything. Things aren't looking good for the MVP uh, group, uh, whatever they call themselves again. I already forget, and they said it like nine times. And then... Um, you get Charlie Caruso or whatever her name is at the end making fun of them. I thought that was kind of funny. She's like, yeah, you did terrible. You did terrible. And then you, I mean, probably a good thing, you know, with the way things are going, that you didn't have to do anything. Or whatever that was. I don't know. Why is Kevin Owens playing a guy that's just like, isn't Kevin Owens supposed to be a... In my opinion, one of the only things that Kevin Owens has going for him. I mean, first of all, let me let me say... Kevin Owens does have a range, right? A range of things he can play. Kevin Owens is capable of of playing a heel who just wants to kill you. Kevin Owens is great at playing a face. Kevin Owens is great at playing a comedy act. So, you know, Kevin Owens is really good at playing all these different things. But why is Kevin Owens playing this soft mediator guy every week who's like I've got the Kevin Owens show and come down and say what you want to say you know I mean he's good at it but isn't this guy supposed to be about fight Owens fight and like he's sort of got the the out of shape but MMA rough guy look he's a great wrestler in the ring when he's allowed to wrestle the way he can um, a brawler look, but is deceptive because he can actually really kind of pull off a lot of wrestling moves and execute a lot of things. Isn't that what Kevin Owens is? Why is he coming out here like The Miz or somebody? It's a waste of his character. I don't understand it. It's uh, it's similar to Aleister Black. Let me go to Jaron real quick. We got donations rolling in. We got all kinds of stuff rolling in. I'm going to play them in a minute. If you want to donate, the link is down below, or you can super chat down below. Whatever it is, Streamlabs, Twitch alerts, all the donation amounts are listed way at the bottom down below. Check that out, too. A um, bunch of stuff we got to get to, but um, I'm going to throw Jaron on for a few minutes here. Just talk to him and uh, see what's up. What's up, Jaron? Hey, I made it. What's going on, Joe? Baby. How you doing? Small Afro Games, Jaron. It is. Hey. It's been a minute, huh? It's been a while. We did an interview a the uh, weeks ago, week months ago that uh, we put up on Patreon. So a lot of you guys heard that. Said, "Wow, Jaron! Oh my God, he's back! He's alive!" And it was crazy, man. Um, How long a, was it since like the last time I was like before before the before the whole podcast thing? I think you called. How long was it before? I want to say you called though, like not that long, like like right around after they announced Boston is for SummerSlam. You called, I think, and we talked. Like you were like, "Oh man, I'm gonna be there," and we talked about that live. But it was like a call for like three minutes or something. Mm, no, I th okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think it was before the SummerSlam uh, last. It was year. before yeah. the SummerSlam. Okay. <laughs> Bret Hart just loves calling it the SummerSlam. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, no, fantastic. How you doing? You doing good? No, I just oh. watched Raw. I see. You know, I I think I think you're overreacting a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I didn't hate. I didn't hate it. I mean, it was it was weird. For sure. It was definitely like... Well... I mean, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I mean... So, Rollins 
last, the segment at the end, like that whole thing. I was fine okay. with that. Drew and Randy's promos, I thought were good. Like that. Um, Shane's enthusiasm as a host of this underground thing, I like that. Uh, some, you know, all, there. Then I'm trying to think of what else was possibly good. Oh, the the strippers too. They were great. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and I want to say that. Oh, the other thing that was funny was watching Pat Buck, but that's only because we know about Ryback and how Ryback says that you know Pat Buck. Um, got a guy to give up a million dollars while they wrestled him in their underwear with erections. Is that the guy that was with uh, Naya? That's yes. Pat Buck is? Yes, that's okay. the guy who was standing there the night, the day when I approached Ryback. Oh, wow. And I said to Ryback, like, hey, man, listen, we're just joking on my show. You know, you should take it easy. Pat Buck is the guy in the blue shirt staring like an owl from across the room, but he doesn't have a beard here, so... You, it's hard to tell it's him, but that's Pat Buck. So I see. He was the one you that know, was worried that he was going to have to stop Ryback from f punching me out. You know, Ryback followed me on Twitter like two years ago and then just recently unfollowed me. He I don't followed know what it was the about. entire JCS community almost. <laughs> because, what, is, that, is that what it was? Yeah, because he has an algorithm program on Twitter. And because of our interaction with Ryback at that time, um, his algorithm said, oh, my God, follow all these people. They want to meet you and stuff. I see. It's a computer program. They follow, then they unfollow, and then he follows more people, and he and then people follow him back, and he gets tons of followers. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's a freaking now, nut job, but whatever. Normally, normally, like, regular people who want to be celebrities do that so they can sure. feel important. You don't normally see an actual, you would think, celebrity do that, but they, but amazingly, they do it. So, he right back also did it with Amazon reviews and Instagram. I can't prove those ones, but... I, mm -hmm. It looks like he did. I can't prove that, though. It's allegedly. But the Twitter <laughs> thing is 100% proven. We proved it years ago. So going <laughs> going back to Raw, yeah. what, what exactly do you hate? I mean, besides, besides the underground stuff, clearly, because I, I can't defend that at all. Well, um, mm -hmm. well, I don't. Um, MVP and Apollo Crews wasn't very good to me. Uh, you don't think so? I, didn't really I care. mean, MVP is obviously like, you know. I liked, I liked MVP, and I thought, like, okay, he's got his belt back. Good. That's what I thought. Like, so that was all right. Like, good. The role models thing was all right, I guess. But I didn't, you know, I'm just sure not into it I, that I much. Think go, for the MVP thing, I think the mistake that they've done is just like is having him wrestle as well as being a manager. I mm -hmm. think in a managerial role, he'd be 10 times more entertaining because that's where he shines, yep. to be honest with you. I yeah, I agree. I don't think he, that, but... he shouldn't be wrestling. I agree. The yeah, other guy right. should be shining and he should be, although I like him though, so it's weird. Like, I don't know what to say about that, but. Um, and um, the... honestly, the whole Bailey and Sasha thing, I think, I mean, the fact that they're flipping the whole, you know, how Bailey makes Sasha do everything, now Sasha's making Bailey do stuff. I don't mind it. You know, it's, it's, it's a little repetitive. I think it's not really going to go anywhere anytime soon, but I don't. See, I mean, just based on the women's division and how they've built everybody so far, um, I think that it's too. Because even Shayna, I was like, I was looking at her like, I don't, you don't deserve. Like, I don't want to see you in a title match anytime soon. So it's like I don't know what they can possibly do besides another program with Oscar. You know what I'm saying? But like, right? I don't know. I well, don't know. But yeah, I I didn't hate I didn't hate the show at all. I thought the 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 street profit stuff um, with the whole poison angle. I thought that they ruined it with the saying it was poison i thought you know he was just having like i don't know like a like a <laughs> i don't want to say they, it, they did the anyway. Shawn michaels thing again oh but my mind went to eddie guerrero didn't he have something in the ring one time like on tv like actually like not like like for real but like they faked like a thing uh um, like, maybe they now. did yeah i i guess i guess they redid it with eddie too i i guess i don't know i didn't see that because i would say that the eddie guerrero stuff was happening that was the year where i watched the least amount of wrestling ever Mm -hmm. Was that was two thousand two? I want to say two thousand two and three. I watched the least amount of wrestling in my whole life those two years because I was getting laid, I think, or something. I don't know. Sure. It was, I don't know, but no, it was just like I, <laughs> I. Yeah, those were the two years, man. Like I think I've watched almost entire year every year forever, except yeah. two thousand one, two, and three. Maybe I don't know, whatever. But the bottom line is I missed it. But, yeah, I thought of Shawn Michaels fainting in the ring. They were like, oh, my God, what happened? Then they no, put I, him I on a stretcher. Um, and I could be wrong, but I think that they had Eddie, like, fake, like, a heart attack. And then JBL, like, just 
pinned him and walked away. Yeah, no, they, they did do that. that. No, they did do that. No, you're right. Okay. I mean, they did. I saw other people saying that, and I think I do remember that now, but I just didn't see it live when it happened. I just remember like seeing it later or another time, like, oh, wow, they did that? That's crazy is what I thought. Sure. Um, Riot Squad was... I, th- I mean, they were going to br- put these two together. We saw it coming. We thought... I mean, they did all right, man, with their acting and stuff. I just didn't care about any of this stuff. Like, I just yeah, felt no, like there was no sure. wrestling match tonight that I thought was good that for made sure. me go, yeah, that was a great match. There was no match that I thought. It certainly wasn't a good show. You know what I'm saying? I, I yeah. don't want to go ahead and say that it's an overall bad show because, I mean, I feel like when they test stuff out, it's like you can't really just, like, immediately be like, well, that's 100% garbage, even though, you know, the underground thing. I, even if you do like the underground thing, I think that you're going to get – bored of it very fast because how you can't really do much with it it's just i don't see like any like storyline things happening with it you know what i'm saying i think it's just going to be some stupid fake mma stuff and it's going to get old like really really fast well they didn't Um, even do that to me they really just did this brawling with shaky cam and it was like what the what the hell is the point in this (laughs) uh, the funniest funniest part to me was um what was his name the old commentator uh dio madden how they were talking yeah. about how he's going to train to be like an official professional wrestler, and then he got beat the crap out of by Sheldon yeah. Benjamin. Like, there's years. Dio Madden, yeah, he can do it. And he got spine bustered and then knocked. <laughs> he was done. Oh yeah. my god, dude, it was so it was so dumb to me. Like I don't know, bro. It was just not. I don't. I there's nothing I would ever watch again on this show. I don't think, except maybe Seth Rollins promo because I laughed out loud at him. Yeah. I, I like Dominic. Um, and I, I I think that that's maybe Drew and Randy's promos and everything Seth Rollins did. And I don't think there's another thing that I... Maybe I'd watch the Pat Buck stuff again. But again, that's because we like... Like, you know, we got Ryback saying he wants to get Pat Buck fired a year ago. like, And he's like, I'm going to get you fired and you're never going to work there again. And, and all that stuff and it's like now he's fired now he's hi- rehired mm-hmm. after being fired and not only that but so they're really watching him. it back for personal reasons and they turned him it's into not- a cuck face so i mean anyway uh-huh. but yeah man i gotta i'm gonna move on man jaron but I, you know because tonight i'm gonna make it short you know on another night i might leave you on for a while and we keep going but no for sure anything else you want to say man or plug or, or say about raw or say or anything um, just say it right now man bring it on no you know, I, I I think it's coming off that I I, I like Raw tonight. No, I think I, you're saying it wasn't. You're saying it's not. You didn't think it was just a garbage shithole. You just thought it was like, all right, it was all right, but whatever. You know. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it good though, by any means, for sure, for sure. For I think sure. you're saying like it's. You know, you're giving it like a. What are you giving it? Like a five out of ten? <laughs> Probably like a four, to be honest with you. I oh. like I, again. I didn't hate it, hate it, but I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's like. A good show. I'm not like retarded, but you know. Yeah, I mean, like I might give it a four, two, or three, or four, or something. And part of it is because at least it had full on ADD. Like this show was all sure. over the place. Every like there was something going on. You know, every like the the one thing I'll say is the pacing was decent. That's that's a positive I can tell you. Is although I thought this was like a three out of ten or a four out of ten show, mm-hmm. the pacing at least, like I didn't. Maybe some people did feel like it wasn't good, but for me, I never felt like I wasn't going to go into a coma completely. You know what I mean? There was always something they, happening again. They did kind of tie together everything. The, the you know, the flickering of the light stuff, which I thought was going to be the the faction, which they tweeted. They tweeted that d- there's yeah. going to be a new faction on Raw tonight. They Like WWE official account tweeted, there's going to be a faction. Yep. And, Everybody uh, thought the Undisputed was coming or something like that, and then yeah. nope. Yep. All right, but maybe, maybe they are. I mean, so anyway, you know what I did miss was why were the lights flickering? I, I saw something was on fire and I never figured out what was going on. Yeah, a bunch of like people, like rioters, threw Molotov cocktails at the <laughs> Is that really what they went with? That it was rioters yeah. or something? Yeah, they were like, yeah, come on. And they legit threw like fireballs at like this like production. Wait, were they black? You know what? They weren't. They showed every, they showed uh, nothing but their hands. They were all hooded people. But they yeah. were all white, every single one of them. So I, I guess they they uh, they can read the room a little bit. But oh my god, dude, I am dying. I got now. That might be my favorite thing of the night, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> That's hilarious. It like, are you yeah. kidding me? Rioters throw a Molotov cocktail at the power supply, and they should have been white because it's usually it's been all the you know the Antifa people doing it. Um, yeah, I, think, I think every single one of them. Uh, 
B- BLM is out there protesting, protesting, and then BLM and uh, uh, BLM is out there protesting, and then the Antifa people show up, sure, with their skateboards, <laughs> angry at their right. parents, <laughs> fighting fighting for the racial injustice the wrong way. <laughs> Idiots. Um, now there was a lot of um, a lot of diversity on the show though tonight. I will say that the WWE is. Uh, going full diversity mode right now is i mean really from from like five years ago if you look at the show Mm -hmm. and think about who's on it's kind of it's the most diversity i've ever seen uh on uh wwe i think ever i mean i'm serious like i'm not i'm only saying this because i still see people say stuff about oh you know they're whatever and maybe they are but one thing I can't deny is, damn, there's a lot of diversity on this show. More than AEW, and AEW is the ones that are like, we're going to change it all or whatever. That's weird. It's interesting. Yeah, um, I think when you when you shove diversity down our throats too much, it becomes a little like, come on, guys, you know? Yeah, just I give us good people. Natural, you know? Give us people like, oh, that guy's really entertaining. Put him on the air. Like Bianca Belair. I think that would yeah, be perfect. Yeah, I like Bianca. You know? I really do like her. Um, but just putting, you know, minorities on for the sake of, you know, hey, look, minorities. I think that's kind of stupid. No, but, yeah, you know. no doubt, and they would do that too. But I think they're, I don't know, they're doing, I don't know, they're doing an all right job right now. But I don't know. Look at Pat Buck looking at himself right there like he's a snack. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Jerry, man, good to hear from all you. Right, uh, Smaller Fro Games on YouTube. Over, what do you have to do? subs? Uh, what am I? Oh, uh, ten point five thousand. Double digits, baby. Hey, let's go. Yeah, we do freaking uh, championship matches. I have a WWE Online Games Heavyweight Championship. And every two weeks, the championship is defended on uh, my channel. So if you guys want to freaking play that terrible, terrible game, hop over. And uh, maybe you can get into a match. That'd be cool. But, Joe, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you sooner, right, dude? All right, later, man. And we can All make right, fun so. of gingers. We can call uh, uh, Irish people, like, stupid-looking ginger redhead, whatever, Pedophiles. you know? I mean. Sure. Yep. What, what, I no, mean, pedo- yep, pedophiles. It's not fair. I mean, one, you know, the Irish were slaves at one point, and we're making fun of them. I don't get it. Our were lives they? don't matter, Jaron. Oh yeah, what? You don't know that? No. First of all, Jaron, everybody has been a slave all over the world at one point. Every race. That's true. Yeah. But no, yeah, the Irish were wicked slaves. Man, they were. Go go Google the Irish and the what how they were treated when they came to America, and go look up the Irish in in Ireland when they were slaves. You'll be blown away. You never hear about that stuff. That's crazy. Well, we don't. We don't give a shit about that. Okay. I mean, wait. But no, nah, thank you, Jerry, man. Have a good night, man. You're going to be blown away, man. When you see the little leprechaun people in chains, you're going to fucking, your head's going to explode. Um, no. <laughs> I'm only 40% Irish. Come on. What else we got? The rest of me is oh, English. A little bit of the bubbly. That's I it. conquered That's myself. Bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh. Virtue a little bit signal. of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> this show was UF Quannaby. New opportunities. Yes, more tits on TV for my viewing pleasure. Speaking of wannabe, many wannabe shock donators in JCS. I am here to save you all for your minuscule words. Wow. Take my hand and join the greater... The greater good, baby. The greater goon. The goon is calling his new faction the greater goon. 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 Super chat. Super chat. Thank you, Goon. Best drawer of the year. Four tenths. <laughs> Andale Peasy. Four out of ten coming from the man from Buffalo. Uh, Peasy, thanks, man. What's up? How's the job going, man? Yo, David Miller. Everybody draw peenies in the chat. And by peenies, I mean penises. In the chat for David Miller, who subscribed. Uh, David, thank you for subbing to the channel, man. How are you doing? You look like you're having a good night, brother. And I hope that you are, son. Super I hope that you are. Party. This damn show gets COVID out of 10. You don't talk about Fight Club, LOL. Oh. Technical issues on a pre-taped show because fans are dumb, right? I guess. I mean, I don't know. I mean... I don't know. I mean, the Molotov cocktail thing is pretty funny, though. To me, that might be one of the funniest things of the whole show, that they actually panned to the outside of the arena to show you that, like, a group of rioters 
or something threw a Molotov cocktail into the generator. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I can't even believe that that's real, dude. I gotta like un I gotta show all the Winkies in the chat. Did Google actually blocks the Winkies? Are you serious? Oh my god, dude! Joe Jonesy's Christ. Yo, Jeremy Pasta, thanks for the two ninety nine. Hello, yeah, Joe Jones, he's always doing it. Oh my god, dude, I don't even know what to tell you, man. I have nothing for tonight. Last week I broke my wall in my room. I destroyed my office area last week. I have nothing for you this week. I got nothing for this. Nothing. Ashley Rose is gonna unveil a new Twitter. Oh my god. Um Yeah, but I mean, dude, listen, man. I they cut down my trees in my backyard today. I was up so early, man, like so early. Um, everyone's talking about the underground thing being brawl for all. I mean, yeah, it, it's it reminded us of brawl for all, but then the, it wasn't anything like that. We thought there was actually going to be some kind of shoot fighting, and we're like, I think yeah, really yeah. Yeah. again. I blame Jeff Jarrett, and I fell asleep before the first segment of the underground stuff, and woke twenty minutes before the end of Raw. You know what, though, uh, Freddie Mitchell? I almost believe that Jeff Jarrett does nothing. I almost think that Jeff Jarrett's on the payroll just to be another fall guy. I would not I would not be surprised if at some point, if this stuff keeps going bad, which who cares because they're making a ton of money, that they don't fire Jeff Jarrett. Super Put some Jeff kind of blame on Jeff party. Jarrett. Why wouldn't they do that? I bet you they would. Shane started an indie. We're not far from a completely animated PPV cartoon. Rock bought the XFL. Oh, my Bring God. Bring the asteroid. Spaz Phoenix, you're right. That's the next step. When things get this bad for a, for a company, oh, my God, the next step is always a cartoon. You're right. Star Trek just did it. Star Trek Lower Decks is out on cartoon. They treat all the white males like idiots. And we have female minority captains that boss them all around and tell them how dumb they are. So, yeah, we've got um, Star Trek uh, Lower Decks is out after their failure of Picard and Discovery and just ruining Star Trek. Uh, now they have a cartoon. You're right. So that's next. That's the next pattern. Fuck, I dropped my phone. That's the, ne that's the next on the list, bro. You just, Super wow, you blew my mind. Party. You absolutely nailed it, Spaz. Main event underground. Poop, 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 poop. Once again, back when when WWE was this bad in the late mid in the mid nineties, um, Vince McMahon refused to turn around the company until it got so bad that they had the water companies take the coolers out. The water companies came for the fucking water bubblers. Because they weren't paying the rent on the water bubblers. That's what made Vince turn the company around. And now we find out that they're making $40 million profit during this quarter. We are screwed! What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. I wonder if this underground as Brock return versus Lashley. Only thing I'm interested in is Drew versus Randy and Fiend Alexa story. But knowing WWE, they will fuck up this Alexa story. Alexa, sweet ass, I can definitely appreciate your uh, comments. I don't give a flying shit about Alexa and Bray Wyatt. I don't care. I don't care about Sister Abigail. I don't care about... I just don't care. Hi, Joe. Well, this show was okay. I guess I give it a three out of ten. I'm so happy the XFL has life thanks to The Rock. Anyway, press that like button and subscribe and remember to hit that bell. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, Caveman Austin, good to hear from you, Caveman. How you doing, man? And thank you for the Kenny Omega 1150 donation. Isn't the XFL starting to feel like Impact Wrestling? Can this thing just die? It's only been back for a year, and I'm already sick of it. Right? What is going on? Give it a hell yeah! Love The Rock, though. It's like it was WWE Bring Your Kids to Work Takeover Day letting toddlers plan the show. No, that's just Bruce Pritchard. That's ju that's just how Bruce Pritchard writes the show. It's one hundred percent Bruce Pritchard. The only difference is, I'm sure what's happening now is Bruce Pritchard is being allowed to write more than he ever did before. So Bruce is being allowed to write more than he ever was before, and. Vince McMahon is taking some of his ideas and making them worse. That's got to be what's happening. That's what's happening. I almost guarantee that that's what's happening. Bruce Pritchard is being allowed to write more than he ever did. And when he has a couple things that are good ideas, I bet Vince McMahon is ruining them or making them worse. That's what I think is happening. So let's say Bruce comes up with five ideas and they're all going to be used on TV. And let's say that Four of them kind of are stupid. But let's say one of them is a really good idea. I bet you four of them air the way Bruce wrote them. And I bet you the one that was really good above the other ones, Vince fucks with it and makes it even weirder or worse. And I bet you that's what's happening. I guarantee that's what's happening. But there's no Jim Cornette and there's no Vince Russo. And there's no Pat Patterson, really. And there's no other guy who's knowledgeable about stuff sitting there with the two of them to be like, but guys, what about this and that? And, and, and instead of Vince McMahon being a super alpha, he's a different version of himself, like I just said. Back in the day, if Bruce had five ideas that were going to air, Vince would fuck around with four of them. Maybe one of his ideas would, would air the way he expected. By the way, if you want to know where I'm getting those numbers, it's from listening to Bruce on his podcast for the last three years. I've determined that about 75% of the time, Vince alters at least half of what Bruce wants to do. I bet you, but and based on the ideas that he did have that, that were altered by Vince or Vince Russo or by Pat Patterson or by Jim Cornette, or by somebody else, I'm telling you, this. these are his ideas. Four of them unfiltered, one of them filtered. And I bet you every time he comes up with that one that would have been somewhat okay, Vince fucks with it. It's, it's probably hilariously true. I can't say that for fact. I don't know. It, I don't know. But wouldn't that be hilarious? That instead of getting like, Four stories that Vince should have made better. Like, good ideas, but, like, like then it should have been... Like, you know, like, some ideas aren't good, are, are, are not good, right? Did you guys ever see a video where someone's painting something and they paint it, like, all sloppy everywhere, but then later they clean it up and then they tweak it? And then by the end, you're like, what a beautiful picture that is. Oh, my God. But when they started, it was a big flubbering mess, it looked like, until they filled in the lines and colored in things the right way and whatever. But you were convinced that they ruined it or that they weren't going to do it right. Or you ever start a project where you put a couple pieces down and it looks ugly and you're, you're like, I'll never figure this out. And then you keep adding pieces to it and it gets better and better. That's what it's like. Somebody comes up with an idea and then someone else adds to it. And then someone else adds to that. Then they start fine-tuning the idea until it turns into this great idea, this great thing, like a great song or something. But every week on Raw, it feels like we're getting the beginning of the idea. Or it feels like we're getting an idea that went, that somebody, it was, they went too far on. It never feels like that sweet spot or complete spot ever to me, almost ever. Not, well, maybe like one or two things, but almost never does it feel like it's sprouting to the, to its potential of what it's supposed to be. And I think that this is part of it. This is clearly Bruce Pritchard. I mean, we know he's the head writer now, but I mean, this is just so Bruce, it's unbelievable. I think I think Vince doesn't care about many of the lower grade angles. So Bruce is just being allowed to do it all. 
And then I think when it comes to some of the main angles, Vince is super involved in that. Either way, man, you're getting WrestleMania 9, it feels like, every week. It feels like WrestleMania 9 every week. And I hate to say this, but I, I may have been sorely mistaken because I believed several months ago, and I mean, or a year ago now, or whatever it's been, I believed, I even I even said this on the show multiple times, you can go back and look this up, before they hired, before they hired Bruce. I said WWE needs to go out, and I think they need to hire Bruce Prichard because I think they need some comedy backstage things that work again and things that work and can draw us away from the ring. I thought they would hire him, and I thought he'd be in charge of one segment or two segments, or maybe he'd just be there to help the writers, to, to give them ideas of what's worked in the past or why things may not work or work. Never did I think the guy would become the head writer, and never did I think that we'd be in COVID, a pandemic, and we'd be having to write this stuff even more because there's no audience. And you know what? If you ask me who's a good guy to have with no audience, I mean, I would have said he's... That's a guy that you probably do want to have. I'd be like, dude, go get Bruce Pritchard. He knows how to write like these weird comedy skits and things that you may not need an audience for. He sort of knows how to write... Bruce Pritchard kind of knows how to write sitcoms, not sitcoms, um, um, like late night comedy sketch type stuff. Like, do you know what I mean? Like uh, the Jimmy Fallon stuff or the back in the day more, that's more like Jay Leno and uh, Johnny Gleason or Jack, Gle not Jack Gleason, uh, you know what I mean? God, I can't, Johnny Carson, like stuff like that. He's sort of that type of guy to me. And I think he could have done a good job with some segments during the COVID pandemic era stuff. But as the head writer? What? What kind of crack are they smoking up there? What kind of insanity are they smoking? You need a new guy. I'm not even I'm not even gonna do it, guys. You know what I want to do? I'm not gonna do it. You know what I want to say. And you know what I want to say and what I want to say. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I feel like I am waste, wasting some of my potential in my life. But I'm not going to do it. I don't care who you hire, WWE. I don't care if you hire... I don't care who you hire. You, you need to hire somebody who has seen 80s the 90s, the Attitude Eras, they've seen the current stuff. They've seen the indies. They've seen Lucha Underground. They've seen Impact Wrestling. They, they, they know why they like New Japan Wrestling. They know why they like AEW. But they know why they like Hulk Hogan. And they know why Stone Cold worked and The Rock worked and why these things worked. They know about what, what worked in NWA and what worked back in the day in NWA and what worked in WCW back in the day and what works today and how social media works and how hyping up something can work. They know about why commentators who are good can bring charisma and passion and excitement to a product and not this roboticism that all of your backstage announcers and everybody brings. And this overproduction, it does not work. The idea that anything can happen and it can be exciting is lost in WWE because it's overproduced. That is one of the biggest problems. Overscripted, overproduced. Still remains to be the biggest problem. And then the storylines and then the that go nowhere or that don't exist... I don't care who you hire. I don't care who you friggin' hire. But hire somebody else. Bruce Pritchard isn't gonna get it done. It's 2020. Nobody is gonna get it done that got it done in the past because we are living in a different era. Okay? 
Triple H is able to get things done because Triple H knows what the fans like and want. Or to some capacity, he knows what a certain group likes. Triple H has an eye for talent. He's got an eye for promos. He's got an eye for size and characteristics and char charisma. Right now, I would say that even Triple H doesn't quite have what it takes to may not even have what it takes to find the next guy that's going to transcend wrestling. And right now, Triple H is losing to AEW. He can't beat AEW. So even the one guy that I think is the best guy in WWE at dealing with talent, putting people in place that can handle talent and book shows, booking shows, booking wrestling matches, booking character. To me, Triple H is the best guy in WWE at being able to book matches, characters, putting people in positions that are going to help the company, help the product. He went and grabbed Moro Ranallo. What a great idea. You guys fired Moro or you don't like working with Moro? Can I, I'm going to have Moro. Moro Ronaldo is the best announcer in the WWE. Moro has kind of lost some of his flair and lost some of his hype. For whatever reason, people maybe got sick of him or something. I think part of it is that Moro gets a little too concerned with Moro in his own world. That's what makes him great, but it's also what I think is disconnecting him a little bit from the audience now, where he's like, Goodness gracious, I can't believe... And he's sort of like on his own little thing. But I still love him. And, and you know, it used to bother me when I would do commentary and people would write Moro or something below my thing. Uh, and I'd be like, dude, I didn't even know who Moro Ranallo was like six years ago. I didn't know who Moro was. And I was doing the same commentary six years ago and eight years ago, pretty much, that I'm doing now. So when you're telling me I sell like Moro, it used to piss me off. Or the, or the oh, you sell like Moro. But I know what they meant. What they meant was the excitement and the yelling and the, the, the excitement about the product is there. So I took it as now a compliment. Like, that's pretty cool. But I don't think I really do. I think I, there's a part of me that's like that. But there's a part of me that's like a lot of different people all rolled into one when I do announcing. But the fact of the matter is why I say that is I think there's a disconnect. And I think that's why some people say that. But Moro Ronaldo is the best announcer in WWE because he's passionate and I buy it. Nigel McGuinness is the best second guy in the WWE and they don't even have him right now. It's really enraging because Tom Phillips sucks at this point. He really doesn't. He's a pretty good guy. He does knows how to do things, but I just can't deal with him anymore. I miss Nigel and Mauro Ronaldo. They were the best announcers in WWE. And together, they may have been the best announcers anywhere. Better than AEW. Because AEW is so discombobulated with, with Mr. I-know-every-stupid-indie-move-ever and Jim Ross, like, Suicida? What's that? Oh, my God. And then Tony and just everybody. I don't know. They're all discombobulated. But more Ronaldo calling matches. Like, by God, it's a car accident! It's a car wreck in NXT tonight! Oh, Moro, he might have... I think he separated his shoulder coming off the ladder. You can see that Lars Sullivan's able to get to his feet, but Velveteen Dream is a unable to get off the mat without with his... You, normally, you push off the mat. He's using only his left arm, Morrow. He may have well separated his shoulder. And oh, what a clothesline. And now, Velveteen Dream's in trouble. One, two, oh, it was so close for Lars Sullivan. But the hand of the referee, one inch from the mat. That's about, that's like life flashing before your eyes, Moro. His shoulder just, it might have come off a canvas by accident. As a matter of fact, maybe Lars Sullivan was too confident on the pin, but it was it was very close for Velveteen Dream. It, if he give him credit for having the wits about him to get the shoulder off the canvas, the sweat pouring off the face. Of Lars Sullivan in the anger. This beast gets more furious every time Velveteen Dream kicks out. 
I don't know what he's doing now, Mo. I don't know why he's doing this. He's thrown the ladder from the ring. The whole point is to climb the ladder, to grab the title, to become the champion. And he's thrown it out of the ring. Potentially, Mo, he wants to do more punishment. Well, he wants to maybe punish Velveteen Dream. But the fact of the matter is, there's a ton of money hanging above us all right now. And Lars Sullivan is dis deciding to discard the money and look for the carnage. You know, and there was like, that's those are the best announcers. Those are the best announcers. But they're in NXT. Because Moro isn't able to deal with the guy in his head. Because Vince McMahon is super overproducing and controlling everyone. The only people he could possibly hire are super dorks who are yes men, who uh, are, lack, are, are devoid of souls is the only thing I can think. <laughs> we have a new member of the JCS Army. McLean Jr. 420, smoke up, baby. Smoke that pipe. pipe, 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 pipe. Thanks for becoming a member, McLean. Thank you very much, uh, JR420. Thank you very much for becoming a sub, man, uh, and uh, hitting that membership down below and giving me a couple extra bucks a month, man. Really, really appreciate it, dude. I give you love. Love, love, love. Thank you, sir. Super Chat Party. When will WWE return to normal again? <coughs> what's normal, Jay Frost? <coughs> what What's normal with WWE? <coughs> with the crowds? I mean, I don't think you're going to see normal, normal-ish. I don't think you're going to see normal crowds, but you'll see normal-ish. You'll see a little more people. I don't think you're going to start seeing a little more people until October now because of the whole what's going on in Florida and down south. I mean, it, lo it looks like October that you won't see anybody. In October, they might start to pack some more people in there maybe. But normal? What does normal mean? The show keeps getting worse and worse every month, no, whether COVID happened or not. It was getting worse and worse every week. It was. Here we go. I'm about to get it, man. So I don't know. Here we go. When you, when you fire here everybody. Go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. And Vince. Oh, when Vince isn't no. in charge. Best part of the show was Nia Jax getting suspended. I laughed so hard if that battle cow. Maybe she will learn to not hurt people and wrestle. That was hilarious, Caveman Austin. And the funniest part about it was our old friend of the Joe Cronin show. The man who tried to steal money from us, or from Ryback, allegedly, Pat Red-Haired Buck, got cucked out by Nia Jax. Let's hear it in Ryback's own words. The last time you talked to Pat, like I uh, sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day that I'm gonna personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, and I know the, uh, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational speaker or uh, speaker and be positive. I am, but there, I, I'm also I don't put up with little bitches, and I'm a fighter at the end of the day. And if a guy's gonna run his mouth, and Pat was running his mouth to other promoters, is speaking ill of me that I'm that I'm an asshole and that I'm horrible to work with. All I say is ask any promoter I've ever worked for what the story was, and you're not. The, the, the proof is in the pudding. It. These people robbed his buddy KM and fucking Pat and all these other crew of guys were doing homosexual wrestling activities with an old man and robbed him of nearly a million dollars, oh. which they joked about it. Oh, it was never anything. I've heard what was going on with those guys and what they were doing. And the guy eventually passed away, Bob, the wizard, as they called him. And it was talked about on this show, who I always would I never understood any of that. I go... I always told him it was fucked up when we would talk off the air that they would go and perform weird wrestling moves on this old man and, and took him of all his money over a matter of years. I, I'm just going to present you guys with facts. What kind of human being, if you're going to do that kind of shit, that you're, you're, you're fucked up. And I, nothing against people that held their sexual preference or anything like that, but they robbed this man of all his money. Yeah, Ryback talks about being positive. What I like to bring up about Ryback is the day that he screamed in my face, be positive. Uh. The next day, 
I, I told him I will be. I said, all right, man, listen, I will be. And you go on your day and have a good day. And the very next day on his podcast, after he told me not to say stuff on my show that wasn't positive. Do your own things. Do jokes. Do your own jokes. But don't just leave me out of it. Don't be po- be positive. The very next day, he told me that he wanted to kill me and he envisioned me dying in a pit of spikes. I will never understand this type of hypocrite or hypocrisy. My brand is all about being positive. Now, you know what your brand is about? Your brand is about you can say whatever you want about anybody anywhere, joke or fact, and you don't care. But if anybody ever jokes about you even, you you want to punch them and fight them, and there may be consequences for somebody joking about you. So somebody jokes about you, there may be consequences. And you're going to then tell that person, you're lucky I don't kick your ass. Be more positive next time. And then the next day, you're going to say that you hope that person dies in a pit of spikes. And then you're going to tell guys like Pat Buck that you're going to get them fired from their job. And expose all this stuff. Without a doubt, Ryback, Ryan Reeves, you are a big muscle head, trash human being. I have several times tried to contact Ryback to try to have a conversation to really square this away. Every time I was either blocked or just nothing. I'll come on his show under a fake name. I'll talk to him off air if he wants. Nothing. Because he's a baby and he's a fake. He's a fake. I'm positive about being every day. You're going to be positive. He just, he's using this. He saw the motivational people and the positivity people out there that make a living after wrestling. And he said, oh, that's how I can make money. I can pretend to be this motivational guy. Yeah. Hey, little Devin, I'm glad you're taking your muscle pills and everything. Yeah. You're going to be, you can probably be like a guy like me one day and it's really tough. And but He doesn't, none of this is real. He's just doing it to have something to do. Doesn't mean anything. He's completely insane. He can't he can't admit he's wrong, Tiger Blood. You're right. And and we and we proved that Pat Buck asked us for all this money. And he said that I was a liar back then, multiple times. He got angry at me for it. That's why we started making fun of him. Because he got angry at us for, for being like, well, we're not gonna give you a bunch of money. Well, obviously. You said on a podcast later that Pat Buck robs people and was taking money as your producer. So there you go. Pat Buck was the one robbing you. We didn't lie. But he can't even, he never says a word about it. He's still mad. Stay positive. Uh. It's, it's all fake. You're a fake person. I'm, I'm wondering if, if Pat Buck really is a scumbag. I'm wondering if maybe Pat Buck isn't a scumbag. Maybe Pat Buck's a good guy. Maybe Pat Buck is actually a really good guy. Maybe we got this all wrong when you say he stole a million dollars from an old man. Maybe the old man paid money to have wrestlers wrestle with him because he liked that sort of thing. And Pat Buck said, fuck it, if you want to pay me that money to do that, I'll do it. Maybe when you say that Pat Buck robbed an old man... Maybe maybe the old man was dying like he died, and he wanted to have some fun before he died, so he paid a guy. Maybe you were jealous. Maybe that's what it was, Ryback. You ever think of that? Maybe you're jealous that you couldn't rub your rye cock all over an old man for a half a million dollars and take a cut. Maybe he didn't like you know bald-headed assholes. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe he only liked red-headed dudes. Maybe that's what it is. There's Pat right there. He's look he he doesn't look like somebody who's about to defend you here by the way. When you're screaming at me and JD in this video, which is still up on YouTube, when when he's, when you're screaming at us, I don't even think Pat Buck here looks like he's worried about defending you. I think he's looking at you like here we go again. I hope Ryback doesn't do something stupid again. 
That's what he looks like. But this clip is just too delicious. I love it. And we're going to go back to the donations. Monday Night Raw tonight, so much to talk about. The last time you talked to Pat. like I uh, sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day that I'm going to personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, And I know the, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational seeker or uh, speaker and be positive. I am. But there, I, I'm also, I don't put up with little bitches. And I'm a fighter at the end of the day. And if a guy's going to run his mouth and Pat was running his mouth to other promoters, is speaking ill of me that I'm, that I'm an asshole and that I'm horrible to work with, all I say is ask any promoter I've ever worked for what the story was. And you're not, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. But these people robbed his buddy KM and fucking Pat and all these other crew of guys were doing homosexual wrestling activities with an old man and robbed him of nearly a million dollars, which they joked about it. Oh, it was never anything. I've heard what was going on with those guys and what they were doing. And the guy eventually passed away, Bob, the wizard, as they called him. And it was talked about on this show, who I always with Pat, I never understood any of that. I go... I always told him it was fucked up when we would talk off the air that they would go and perform weird wrestling moves on this old man and, and took him of all his money. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I can't get enough. Whenever I see Pat Buck on TV, I just crack up because I think about Ryback saying he's going to get him fired. And I'm going to get him fired. I can't even do Ryback right now. My voice is jacked up, but uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to do him again. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Oh, here we go. Oh, God. Oh. Pat Buck admitted it? Wow. It's like Fight Club and the guys throwing the Molotovs were a throwback to Project Mayhem. <laughs> Bob the Wizard. I want to know what Bob the Wizard looked like. Hail Metal Forever. Thanks, man. It's like Fight Club and the guys throwing the Molotov cocktails was a throwback to Project Mayhem. Yeah, maybe maybe Project Mayhem is coming to Raw. You guys ever think about that? Maybe there's going to be more attacks outside, and then it's good. Or maybe it will be the uh, maybe Undisputed Era. Maybe Undisputed Era are the ones that threw the Molotov cocktail, and maybe the guys maybe they are coming. Maybe they are coming to Raw. Yo, Gatekeeper Drew, subscribing on Twitch again. Thank you, Gatekeeper Drew, using his free. Amazon Prime to subscribe to me on Twitch, giving me $3 a month, costing him nothing. Thank you, Geekkeeper Drew, man, for keeping me on the air. Plus, everything. What? Um, plus, everything that went down um, on Monday Night Raw or on Monetize this and Corrupt the Podcast. Hell yeah, take my pants off. <laughs> Scott M, thanks for uh, the Twitch follow, man. What's up? I got a I got a text from Leah on my phone, and I just read it, and I was just like, "What the hell? What does this mean?" Super chat, super chat. Drew and Randy was great. Everything else was trash. Yeah, I thought Drew and Randy were pretty good on their promos. I like their promos. I like what he, I like what they said about each other. And Randy said that I'm the chosen one, and that's why I can do whatever I want. That was pretty cool. What he said in his promo about, I get away with everything. Shit bomb. Because I'm the chosen one. What in God's glorified crusty anal cum dump hole did I just watch? Oh. It'd rather fuck a bucket filled with nails and broken glass covered in rubbing alcohol. It'd rather watch Stephen Marbury and Marcus Banks run with the Celtics than this SDD of a show. Yeah, uh, Fudge Packer 101. Thank you, ma'am. It can't be this undisputed error. There was five people, NASCAR fan says. God damn it. But maybe they have another member, right? Maybe there's another. Uh... No, I didn't see what EC3 just ranted on. I know that they ripped off his thing. Is that what he's ranting on? I said it earlier. I said, they. oh, my God, they ripped off the EC3 thing with our buddy. They ripped him off. They could. They, they, it's a rib on him. They could have, uh, where is he? Super Chat Party. WWE star Matt Hardy's idea from talk is Jericho. He clearly talked about having an underground fight club that he'd use to push younger talent. Oh, really? Well, I mean, uh, yo, Gonzo the Beast, thanks for the four ninety nine. The only thing is, I just saw EC3 already do it. Right there. 
He did an underground fight club thing. Control your narrative, he said. My past will be stolen, plagiarized, unauthentically imitated, overproduced, or poorly redone, devoid of emotion. But that shit happens when you control your narrative. So I think, uh, I think EC3 has seen enough, bruh. Oh my god, bad omen. My name is Kane and I'm donating the house. Somehow I'm not totally passed out from raw. But what the fuck was the point of 98 of the show tonight? I'm going old school in saying raw was AIDS. Bad omen, thank you, bad omen 666. That's gotta be Kane! Bad omen, I agree with you, man. I just I, I agree. I can't get it. I don't know what they're doing. Bad Omen 666. What up, Bad Omen? Good to hear from you, brother. Trying to control the narrative that he's the United States, blah, blah, blah. Control your narrative is the new EC3 uh, promo thing he's been saying. Here's the, uh, I guess this is a burning thing. Wow, ec three's going full Scotty pants on us. EC3's Fight Club. I drink brand because I'm the Enemies are the grinning man. Grinning man, come on, make me believe in safety. I'm so thirsty, would you answer me? Grinning man, all my friends are fucking the man. All my friends are drinking cran. They're drinking cran. All my friends are drinking cran. Oh my god, drink it. Drink the cran. What a pile of garbage. Such a wannabe UFC fighting crap. Absolutely pathetic. Wrestling fans needs to riot in Connecticut and cut Vince's head and put it on the headquarters of Trump Towers. You suck old man, middle finger. Jesus Christ, Omar. Muslims don't fuck around, do they? They go right for the head. Uh, Omar, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the $17, Omar. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, he said he wants to cut his head off, not me. Just, it wasn't me. I didn't say that. <laughs> FBI, that was Omar who donated that. It was not me. Uh, but no, I thought Shane did a great job as the MC for this Fight Club thing, but it didn't make any sense. There was no reason or point to it. We don't know why they're doing it. Is he paying people? Like, it would have been better if, like, Shane was handing out money. Like, the guy beat a guy's ass for the three, three in a row, and he goes, and he got in Shane's face, and he was like, three in a row! Three in a row! Where is it? And then Shane was like, all right, bro, how am I? There you go, 5,000 or whatever. Thank you! Now bring me someone else to kill! And then Shane was like, oh, bring you more people. Relax, relax. You got, got plenty of money. You got plenty of money. You know, we got... We got plenty of stuff for you, man. Listen, you're going to be able to pay your rent for the next three months off of that. I got another guy you're going to have to fight later. It's going to be really tough. I'm going to up it up. I'm going to up it up. All right? Like, there's none of that, though. There was no reason whatsoever. It was just like, go ahead, fight. Ah, and they just shake Cam everywhere. Who fucking who cares? There was no point in anything. And then, like, and then when, when, when maybe to some people this was seeming cool for some reason, whatever, or, un, or, 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 or mystical, or not mystical, but mysterious. Like, this is kind of mysterious. I wonder what they're doing with this. I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what it means. And then all of a sudden, MVP and those guys show up, and it it immediately took the whole thing down. You had these mid-card guys who had their own stable going, who should really be stuck in their own storyline with what they were doing, then come into the world of the underground thing, and immediately delegitimize the thing I don't know none of that made any sense to me whatsoever what they were trying to do with that 
other than do something to kill time so that they could fill time to create a three-hour show. That's what it felt like. It felt like last minute we have no... we Like, oh my God, Raw, Raw's this week. Guys, we're missing like, like 24 minutes of, of fucking shit. And USA Network doesn't want us airing old stuff. And we don't want to air stuff from the network. We need to do something... And then someone came, well, well, what if we did this, uh, you know, uh, this sort of like like side thing or an underground fighting, like a fight club room or something. And it was like they just threw that out there. just Or there was an, it was an idea that was out there before to do something like this. And then they said, hey, remember that idea you had for that fight club thing? What if we did that? And we'll just, we'll cut to it and we'll have these scenes of people fighting. And it'll be like, you know, crazy or whatever. And then they're like, yeah, all right, let's do that. We'll be able to, we can shoot it really quickly. We can get everybody in there. And oh, we'll be able to fill the time. And and then after that, they were like, well, we, well let's do something with MVP and them because they're going to lose and they're going to need. And then, I, I don't know, dude. How does this even come about? How does this even come about? I have no idea. But it's discombobulated and it makes no sense. I'm lost. Super chat. Super chat. Eradicate co-host pollution of Mr. Cheese Wilson. Mr. Cheese Wilson. Oh, oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. The goon. Thank you, man. He he made he may very well be done, man. He'll probably get his hands on some tainted cheese. Here we go. I'm about to get it, man. Here we go. About to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh no! How is it? Drew McIntyre says prick and gets away with it, and Brad Maddox says the same and gets fired. D. Welsh says, why did the Sasha men end with, yeah, it's, it, she wasn't even legal. Mosh Master D. Um, Drew McIntyre says, prick and gets away with it. Brad Maddox says the same and gets fired. Wow, you're right. Did they, oh yeah, that's right. They fired Brad Maddox for saying prick. I forgot all about that. That was like, how did you remember that? It was like five years ago. Well, I think it's because... I don't know. They they always change their minds about what you can and can't say. It's like a big boot. Give me the hell yeah! Well, there is in a cartoon on the Cartoon Network called Generation Rex. Oh my God, is that really true, Freddie Mitchell? Yeah, I just think that they, they Vince McMahon changes his rules every year, and then his rules apply differently to people depending on if he likes them or not. So there is no right answer. You know, somebody says prick, they can be fired. Someone drew say prick, you say dickhead. Super jet. Super jet. CS Army, are you ready? My new Twitter at BB underscore and over. Oh, wow. Ashley Rose is back on Twitter. Let's go look at her titties. Wait, wait what was it? Whoa, wait. What up? Oh, BB underscore A Nova. I did not watch tonight for my sanity. I'm going to change subjects because WWE sucks and fuck you I can. Did you hear about Diablo Immortal? Blizzard already changed the barb and necro to appease the Chinese commies. Pathetic. Really? Bimbo Baggins, thank you for the 666. Wait, what, what did they change about the Barbarian and the Necromancer? Like, oh, because the Necromancer has, like, ghosts that he summons? Oh, God. You, oh, my God, dude. Fuck China, dude. Fuck you, China. Spin the motherfucking wheel. Spin the motherfucking wheel. Oh, my God. Stop, girl. 
NASCAR Fan 8809 is back bitches. Oh yeah. That Seth Rollins crazy face look is the look he gave Becky from behind when he couldn't pull out cause the pussy that good. Oh yeah, man. I got that one. Yo, NASCAR fan, what's up? They were up in Loudoun the other day. NASCAR, thank you for the $30, bro. Spin the wheel. One of my favorite donations ever. There he is, Seth going crazy. Ah! You are correct, Joe. I work for the WWE and you are 100 accurate about the type of person we are. We have become robots who pander to the powerful in order to get a leg up on the metaphorical ladder. I agree. Everybody's so worried they've got to become a yes man just to work for the company. Everybody just wants to be a yes man to have a job. Back in the day, that's not how it went down, man. People weren't even afraid to be fired, it felt like. Back in the day. Hell yeah, you had Shawn Michaels basically being the biggest dickhead ever. And they gave him more stuff. Now what happens? Jason Tarr... With the subscription on Twitch, man. What up, Jason? Thank you, man, for the subscription on Twitch. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you guys very much for donating tonight. I know that I've been a little bit out of it. I've been awake since 4 a.m. I was out in the sun. They were cutting down the trees in my yard. All my my trees are down, guys. The big ass tree that was gonna kill us is down. Uh, for those who care. Um, and I was with my kids all day because Leah had a, Leah was sick. Got a new subscriber. And so she was sleeping for a little while during the day. So I, I was I was doing her job and mine at the same time while trying to keep my kids from running outside while the dangerous giant bits of tree were falling into the backyard. Uh, Jamar Games. What up, Jamar Games? Thanks for the uh, for the uh, sub, man. What's going on? So and I'm a little bit out of sorts. I'm a little bit tired. I'm a little bit whacked off here. And so uh I really appreciate I appreciate you guys being here and hitting the like button, subbing, and staying with me. Uh, and I know Jake's not here either. You know, Jake was sick today uh, again, and uh, he wasn't able to be here. Dude, we tore down a tree today, and I, it was just crazy, man. The ho whole house was shaking every time a piece of the tree came flying down. This tree was gigantic, bro. It's gigantic. I was up at 7 a.m. to let the guys in the yard. Had to clean up a bunch of stuff. We got pine uh, tar on everything or whatever you want to sap on everything. Counted the rings on the tree. It's about 100 years old. Somewhere. I couldn't quite accurately count it ever, but it, I always got somewhere to about 80-something. And then it was like, I think there's more lines. So the thing came down. No more big tree. Pretty crazy. A lot of people saw the tree. Look, I got Gavin was getting up on the tree. My son was getting up on the tree. Gavin, my youngest. My oldest, my first son. Um, when I started this show, I only had one kid. Now I have three. But I, when I started the show, I only had one kid, and it was Gavin. He was only two. He was uh, about two and a half years old. And uh, I, sometimes I would do stuff with him on camera so you guys would see him. So there's some people that saw him from a three-year-old to being a ten-year-old now. So He was getting to get up on one of the on the tree stump, and he was like getting up on it. It's like sideways slithering up the tree. And I was taking pictures of him because I was trying to get pictures of all the kids. And he got up on the thing and he looked like he was like doing a, mo a model pose. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's Something it. like that. Want some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> Joe, you son of a bitch, please paint me white. <laughs> My dog, Clover. You want to be white, Clover? What's wrong with being black? I don't get it. Clover, come on. I love you the way you are, Clover. You're chocolate, and I love it. I lick you up and down. Come on, don't do that. Don't do that to me, doggy. But yeah, Gavin went to get up on this, and I took a picture of him, and it looks like he's doing some kind of model pose. Look at this. He was getting up on the tree trunk because I'm, like, taking a picture of him. He looks like he's modeling a thing for, like, Kids Outdoor Magazine or something right here. Uh, so I thought that was hilarious. But yeah, Gavin's getting big, man. He's getting to be big. That tree is huge. Because he's pretty big now, and that tree looks gigantic behind him. Looks hilarious. This damn thing came down. Look at the chunks of tree, man. 
Just chunks of tree. There's friggin' tree all over my goddamn backyard. But yeah, they're coming tomorrow to take that away and then cut down the other tree. I really, I strongly want to build a tree for it. I strongly want to build a tree for it, man. Never would have had this uh, tree cut down, but my mother was like, I, we were like, you know, we got to, someday we'll take this tree down because it's dangerous. And my mother was like, I'll take care of it. And I'm like, no, we're not, no, you don't, you don't have to do that. We don't have to take the tree down right now. We'll just leave, it's whatever. But my mother was like, no, no, no. We'll take that. We'll get, the, I'm getting, I'm taking that tree down. I'm like, are you, what? So, you know, we went in with her on it. But I, I never would have gotten it done if it wasn't for her. Because I would have been like, yeah, whatever. I'm not paying for that. I'm not paying to have that shit taken down. You know, if it falls on us, whatever. <laughs> but uh, so because of Mama Cronin, we had the tree disassembled there. That thing, it, and it was, it's a massive tree, man. So I was all day dealing with that and, uh, which you wouldn't think it would be stressful, but it, it was, it was like the kids kept trying to leave the house. It was like, stop trying to go outside. Look at how big this thing was before they cut it down too. Look at this thing. I mean, this is after they cut all the branches off too. Look at all the branches. They cut all the branches off at this point. We're going to, we're going to get murdered by the sun. Do you understand how pasty and white my family is? We're all Irish. Everybody here is pasty. We're going to get skin cancer now because these trees were the only thing protecting the whole backyard from the sun from the times of 2 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And now it's going to be raining down on the backyard. If global warming kicks in and we start having 110-degree days in Massachusetts and the fires start catching fire in the backyards and stuff, we're going to be like, damn, wish we uh, kept those trees. <laughs> I don't know. It was a wild day, man. So much shit. Oh boy, that tree was huge, man. That tree was a massive deal. But I could sell some firewood to some motherfuckers, I'll tell you that. That thing wasn't going anywhere, right? It was so huge. Cut me down, Cronin. What's up, man? You should totally keep it. Well, too late now. No, it wasn't $10,000, no. It was $4,000. It was $4,000. I did not pay for it, though. I never would have paid for that. I'm not even paying for my tooth that needs to be fixed for $1,200. I'm not even doing that. Uh, plenty of rain tomorrow. Yeah, we're going to get that little storm. Yeah, they think they're going to be able to get here and cut it down in time. Before the tropical storm hits. So, hey. Um, I'm trying to keep a couple, of, a little bit of the wood. I'm not, I don't want to keep a lot of it because there's termites everywhere. But I do want to keep a couple, couple uh, logs, you know. In case. I might want them. Uh, is there anything I missed on Raw tonight? Angel Garza, you know, the feigning thing. I didn't, I never understood the feigning thing. It didn't work for me. I didn't buy it because the commentary team is so robotic and stupid. The only commentator that I believe is Samoa Joe. And he's not really a commentator. But he's the only one I vaguely believe. Tom Phillips, I don't believe him. Byron Saxon, I sure as hell don't believe him. He is awful. An unbelievably great backstage interviewer. A atrocious piece of trash shit commentator. And yet you have robotic bimbos in the back doing interviews with people and they suck. Yet Byron Saxton is good. And you have him sucking on commentary. I got an easy solution for you. Fire the bimbos in the back. Move Byron Saxton to the backstage interviewer and put someone else who is in a robotic bad actor person as the commentary guy next to Tom Phillips. And get rid of Tom Phillips, to be honest, just and keep Samoa Joe. That's it. Didn't care about the feigning thing. I didn't think it made sense. I don't think it played right. I don't think it works. 
especially with no crowd. For some reason, that's something you need to do with a crowd, I feel like. I don't know. Uh, or don't even do the whole, something happened during the middle of the, we are on break and something happened. Don't even say that. Because then when you do it a second time, when you actually do it, I go, oh, I saw that coming because they talked about it. Next time, just have the guy collapse out of nowhere. And then you might go, oh my God, what the hell's going on? Is this supposed to happen? Even if you kind of understand, oh, there, it's a work, okay. You'd still be like, what? That's weird. Man. I, what the hell's, you don't see that usually. And then you'll, maybe you'll think about the Eddie Guerrero thing, which I guess was real. And then maybe you'll think about the Shawn Michaels thing. But still, you'll think, whoa, what's going on? But instead, they told you. Something happened at the beginning of the match, and we don't know, and and then it and then it happens, and it's not surprising at all, and you're like, what is it? And then later on, you hear the food poisoning thing, and you're like, oh man, I thought it was going to be something bigger than this. It's just food poisoning. Antifa poisoned his food. Oh, so just nothing was working for me tonight, really. I mean, so oh, that's a lie. I'm. St- you know what it is, is I'm super tired and I need to go to bed right now because Randy's promo and Drew McIntyre's promo worked for me. That was good. Seth Rollins at the end of the night was good. Those close-ups of Seth and Phillips and Samoa Joe and that and the stuff Seth was saying was hilarious. That worked great. I thought that was fine. There was no wrestling match tonight that was good. All the wrestling matches were just nothing to me. And then the underground thing, none of those fights were fun or good or made any sense or meaning at all. And then MVP's gang of guys showed up and beat people up, and that was it. And then they said a super cringy line to go off the air. That was like super cringy, cartoon, but not funny. It felt like they were trying to turn the... Oh, oh and the strippers, the, the, the half-naked women, that was nice. I like that, too. And Shane McMahon was a good host. Just don't know what the fuck he was really doing. Oh, God. I know how you feel about that tree. Both trees in my front yard shaded the house from the sun. Right. Now the front is getting baked. Easily around high 70s to 80s without AC. Right, dude. So now the house is going to get wicked hot. I agree, Jason Tarr. You're right, man. I'm worried. You know, so now we... Now now our house won't get crushed by a tree that falls. It's a white pine, so it really could have fallen. Um, But now the house is going to be superheated. Um, I I think we need to paint the house too. Paint it like white to reflect the sun. Because even though my house was dark blue before, and now it's like light gray, it's still too dark. I think we need to paint the house like fucking white. Jason Tar, man, thank you for chiming in with the ten dollars. Thanks to everybody in the chat. I love the shit out of you guys. And on a normal night. You, you guys know I would stay with you until 2 a.m. I would hang out. I would either play video games or I would rant more. I would take more calls. I would talk about a whole bunch of other shit and side news and other things. But I got to be honest, guys, I am beat, and I'm going to tap out early. I don't normally do that. I, I don't. Um, I, I, I live for being here to be able to do this with you guys. But I was up at 4 a.m., and I was just doing so much. I can, I'm getting cramps in my arms because I need more water. Like I, I've been drinking a ton of water. But I need to go to bed, man. I really do need to go to sleep. I'm exhausted. I never come on here and say this, but with the three kids today and uh, all, all the stuff from the playing and the dogs and my my 12-year-old dog was shitting places and throwing up and we're cleaning it up and the kids are shitting and the fucking tree and the guys and move this and the house is shaking and I'm working on my room and then I'm uploading a podcast and I was uploading stuff on Patreon for you guys and I put up Monetize This live and I I just did not stop moving from 4 a.m. until the minute that I sat down to watch Raw and making lunches and everything like that. And um, and again, normally, normally, even though I would have been busy today, I would have been busy today no matter what. But because Leah was out of commission, Leah was sick. Um, I, I, it was like crazy. It was crazy. 
um, today. So, and that's how important that's how important she is, man, to me. Like to be able to do the school stuff or teaching things or activity stuff with the kids and give them all food and lunch and changing diapers. And if the dog does something, she cleans it and I can do the trash in the kitchen and, and then just work on my show and maybe do some work around the house here or there. Um, but without her, damn, there's a lot of shit to do. <laughs> so yeah, I tapped out, bro. Um, so I just want to say thank you guys. Um, for dealing with me, man. Thank you guys very much. Fucking yawning. <sighs> Love you all. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys sub if you're new. Live after pretty much every WWE deal. And I'll be live tomorrow with Throwdown on my other channel, Corrupted Nation. And uh, monetize this. The band episode, we put it up. If you missed it earlier, it's up on Corrupted Nation. From uh, May May fifteenth, when uh, Tommy's friend flagged it down, that's up. Um, monetize this audio form is up on Patreon, and so isn't Corrupted is up. Corrupted was crazy. Good episodes this week. We've had some hit or miss weeks with those shows, but uh, this week I thought monetize this was good and Corrupted was good. So thumbs up. Not not like amazing shows. Not like those are the best ever, but. I think we I think we had a couple seven out of tens or something like that. Six or seven out of tens. Couple couple weeks ago we had a few four out of tens. You know what I mean? So feels good to be able to get a couple of sevens last couple of days, I think. Let me know. Seemed like people agreed with that. Not really into grading my own shows like Raw or something like that, but I guess it's the best way I can uh, tell you how I feel about it. So Podcasts are all up on Patreon. Check out Patreon. And uh, thank you to the people who uh, joined back up on Patreon. I'll be shouting you out all week and all the time, but all week for the new people. And shout out to these $25 producers. These are people that took 25 bucks or more, and they're dropping it a month. And every month you're a producer, you get your name down below in the description box. And you get the producer title. And uh, without you guys, I'd be fucked. So thank you guys for being producers. We'll be making the new list at the end of this week. So if you guys want to jump on, be on the list. Uh, just go to patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show and check it out. Thank you for doing that and supporting the show. Sharing the show and telling everybody about it. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow. And I'll probably have wrestling news videos out here on this channel. Make sure you hit the bell. And if you're on Patreon, you'll get every alert of every video I do. YouTube will hide my videos. Leah, wake up. What up, Ryan? Vincent Wolf. You can never trust a brony anymore, man. Steve Kalan, thanks for being a member, man. Everything else. D. Welsh. Black Lab in the chat. What's up, Black Lab? What's up, to Glenn? Card Blasters. I would give Raw tonight a 4 out of 10. I'm going to give Raw a 4 out of 10. 4 out of 10 tonight. Uh, mostly it's getting a, a 4 because of its good pacing, a couple of good promos, and its random ideas. But nothing was really good, though, So to me, so I'm really giving it a 4 out of 10. But I give him credit for pacing and trying to do things, I guess. But at some point, man, uh, when are you not going to wake up? Hit me up on Twitter at JCS Commentary, Instagram.com slash Joe Cronin Show, Facebook.com slash Joe Cronin Show, Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Good night, boys and girls. <laughs>